welcome. Welcome to our webinar today. Uh, I, what I was trying to say before is that, uh, of course, today, as you know, we'll be focusing on how to get started with additive manufacturing or 3D printing, as it's uh, most well known as. Um, the agenda today is uh, pretty straightforward. In the beginning, we'll have an, an, introductor, an introductory um, uh, sector about the subject. Uh, and then um, our friend Benoit from the Associate Systems will, will, talk, <laughs> will talk to us a bit about the, the industry and additive manufacturing and so on. And then we'll have a look at, the, at their uh, on-demand solution, uh, 3D Experience Make, as well as having a demo. Uh, and then after that, from uh, 4.30 to 4.45, that is Central European time, of course, uh, we'll have the gentlemen from uh, ProMake giving us their experience on how they've been using the platform. And of course, at the end, we'll have a, a Q&A session. You can, all, um, you can all, of course, uh, shout out your questions throughout the webinar. But uh, by all means, please keep in mind that at the end, we'll have a dedicated time slot for that so that uh, the speakers um, will be able to, to answer. OK, good. Let's get started. Mm, I see. I see. There's still some uh, sound issues. Earlier, people were saying that they're absolutely fine. Uh, from our end, it seems like everything is fi fixed from uh, the previous problem. Yeah. Can can you can you guys all hear us fine? Okay. Okay. Perfect. So let's get onto the presentation then. Um, as you can see on the graph, we've got uh, here a graph provided by uh, 3DP sizing. Um, we have an overview of the annual revenues in uh, billions of uh, dollars around 3D printing, divided in uh, prototyping, tooling, tooling and fixtures, and final parts. So as uh, many of you might know, 3D printing, of course, has been around for a long time, uh, decades as a matter of fact, but it has uh, actually started picking up in the last decade or so. Uh, mainly for usage on prototyping, because it has allowed for some uh, design uh, freedom that was enabled through other technologies. However, what we've been seeing is that it is used, of course, more and more for prototyping as the technologies evolve. There are more printers out there, more material choice and so on. But also it's used for, for more final parts. And as you can see on the graph, um, on the... Uh, on your screen, you'll see that the bar graph on the very right, the green one representing the final parts, has actually uh, it has a tremendous exponential growth over the next year. The projections until 2022, as you can see, final parts are expected to reach nearly five billion uh, US dollars on an annual basis, or surpass five billion uh, US dollars on an annual basis. And uh, a quote uh, that uh, Kearney, the um, the known consulting uh, management consulting business uh, has shared is that 3D printing is poised to disrupt the four to six trillion uh, USD global economy over the next five to ten years. And this was said back in 2018, which uh, in 3D printing years is is quite a long time ago. Um, so overall, we see a lot more final parts being created not only for prototyping, not only for low volume, but also for larger volume uh, production. And as a matter of fact, we've got a few, a few examples to share with you. So uh, Smile Direct Club has been uh, producing dental molds uh, with uh, 3D printing at a very, very large scale. As a matter of fact, they own about 50 machines from Hewlett Packard, <clears throat> which are working on a 24 seven hour basis. Uh, and they have a goal of producing 20 million, that is million dental apparatus over the next uh, year. Chanel, the well-known uh, company, is also producing mascara brushes with micro cavities. Uh, they currently own more than 10 machines from EOS, the um, uh, German uh, printer manufacturer, and they've set a goal of producing 15,000 of those brushes every week. Adidas as well has been uh, producing sneakers insoles, very often uh, specifically made for their user uh, in collaboration with the, with the company Carbon 3D. And uh, they have a goal of producing 100,000 insoles. And the last but not least, Safran and uh, GE Aviation have been producing fuel nozzles for their Leap engine 
and they own they've been using 40 machines uh 40 3d printers from uh general electric additive and they have they've had 30,000 produced 30,000 nozzles produced in october in 2018. so overall we see 3d printing taking such a uh, becoming the norm when it comes to to, to certain projects uh, that um, that need either the design flexibility or the material use that can be processed only through 3D printing. Um, well, today, as we said, we have uh, with us uh, a selection of interesting speakers. So, guys, if you would like to introduce yourselves, yeah. So, I am Benoit Chilnesh. I'm working for that System, and I am in charge of the 3D experience marketplace. Thank you. Uh, I'm Gavin Leggett. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, ProMake International. Uh, we are one of the preferred suppliers on the 3D Experience platform. Uh, we use it extensively and a uh, fantastic platform to be on. Cool. Jason? Hi, I'm Jason Lang. I'm also the co-founder for ProMake uh, International. I'm currently based uh, uh, with offices in the UK. And Gavin's based in South Africa. Um, and we work with quite a diverse sector uh, utilizing the video experience platform all the way to uh, space experience. So we're quite diverse. It's definitely something to look Perfect. at. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jason. And uh, of course, I'm Philippe Zulchoris, uh, Chief Business Officer of uh, 3D Natives, and I'll be moderating today's talk. Uh, I'll, pass on the, I'll pass on the torch to Benoit, but uh, in the meantime, guys, please, by all means, feel free if you have any questions. Feel free to write them down in the comments. At the end of the presentation, uh, we'll try to go over as many of them as possible. Thank you very much. So, Benoit. So today, what I will present, what is 3D Experience Make, a non-demand manufacturing platform? But firstly, we are seeing a movement. A movement is on the go. It is the industry renaissance. Today, manufacturing especially is changing. We have new software, new way to design, and especially new processes. Why we have this change? We have more and more people, which is millennials, if I can say it like that, uh, who are more and more well-connected, who are on the go, who want immediate things, and who wants to work as he shops on B2C. And in other side, we have makers. So now more and more manufacturing people are more digital. Uh, they are users of FabLab, this big uh, community of makers across the world. They want to, to work local and collaborate within a community. And more and more manufacturing companies want to avoid to have so much administrative tasks or so much projects and want to concentrate on his uh, work. And 3D printing in the middle of this industry renaissance is really a catalyst. Today, 3D printing is really changing the way we are producing part. We are doing prototype. We can do some new pieces or new job we cannot ever do before. And it is also changing the way we are developing us DASO system uh, software because we have to adapt of, uh, on uh, this uh, new uh, process to manufacture. But also uh, it's, it is changing the way uh, the designer is working. That's why today everybody has to move forward. And we have different approaches uh, to, to get um, additive manufacturing. It is, do I have to learn it? Can I continue like uh, I'm doing before? So uh, call a manufacturer, find it in, uh, I don't know, in a, on the paper or, in, or on an annuary. Or can I just simply jump into the 3D experience marketplaces? What is 3D Experience Marketplaces? It's really a marketplace for every industry, from transportation and mobility to life science, to help people to create prototypes, jigs, tooling workers, parts, 
spare part or little or small series. Okay. How is it? It's a super simple user experience. On the 3D Experience Marketplace, you can directly exchange and collaborate with manufacturers all around the world and all around processes or, mat or different materials. So when you connect, you can choose your manufacturer and speak directly with this manufacturer and ask for expertise, but also ask for code or whatever. You can match with the perfect manufacturers of 3D printing uh, you are looking for, and it's a lean execution. So you are everything about your order and your uh, collaboration within one unique platform. So you don't have to follow email, etc. Your invoice, your collaboration, your history, your order are within one place. And you have three different ways to ask for a code. It's super simple. You have an instant code engine, so you upload your STL file and you will see immediately price for your part on 3D printing, metal or uh, plastic. But you can also select yourself the manufacturer you think is the best one to provide an offer or good code. Or you can ask and notify all service providers who can match uh, your uh, demand. On the user experience, you can go across 3D printing, of course, and all subcategories of 3D printing, like uh, FDM, etc., or whatever, if you need CNC machining, molding, forming, cutting, it's also available. And you have uh, thousands of different materials uh, within the category plastic, metal, composite, wax, ceramic, and so on. We have today 240 uh, service providers across Europe and North America who are available uh, 24 hours on 24 hours, seven days on seven days to reply to your uh, code or set up instant coding uh, to uh, reply immediately to your code. Sure, Benoit, well, just to clarify something on the previous slide. So you were mentioning, if you don't mind, I'll just go back. Yeah. So you were mentioning about the manufacturing process of 3D printing. So I would assume that applies to all 3D printing technologies available yeah, out there. Exactly. Right? So it's it's FDM, but it's also because uh, some of the materials you mentioned, of course, they they're printed yeah. through different ways. It's all processes uh, on uh, 3D printing or additive manufacturing. Okay. Thank you. How to access to this platform? It's pretty simple. We have a website totally free. You just have to create an account and it's free to create the account. Uh, you create your, your account, you go to make.3dexperience.com, you upload your content and you will have directly a specification page. You specify your request, you will have instant coding for 3D printing immediately or you can choose to ask directly another uh, manufacturer. If you are Katia or SolidWorks user, or e growing user maybe, uh, you can access directly from the software uh, thanks to the app uh, 3D experience marketplaces. I will do now uh, a quick live demo to, to show you how it works in real. Stage is yours. So you are on make.3dexperience.3ds.com. You create an account and you uh, log in. You click on get the code. Here you can upload a new part or take the part you have on your uh, 3D file, which is totally free to have. And uh, when you create your account, you have this uh, little cloud to upload all your, um, all your design. You click on next and you arrive on the specific specification part um, page. Here you have to wait uh, for your design. Always a little bit slow. So you have your design here. You can see it quickly like that. 
During this time, we have a diagnosis of, um, of uh, geometry and manufacturability. I will show you after. So here you, cl you click on 3D printing. You have all the processes we spoke about. So binder jetting, photopolymerization, material extrusion. Let's say we don't know. So we prefer letting the seller choose. After you have all materials, let's say plastic. Here you can be more specific about plastic. Let's say we don't know. Uh, we continue. You can choose additional services like uh, polishing, sanding, etc., and a color if you need a specific color. You have the summary of your request. Here you choose the quantity you need, and here you choose the expected date for for an answer for the code and an expected delivery date in your home. As I, as I said, you have on the left instant coating. So some of our manufacturers immediately coat uh, about your project. Or you can choose to do a manual coat where you can select a service providers or ask all the community of, of service provider. Let's say we want to do it with Promake International. You click on buy. And here you just have to add your address. You put a message, and you have the price directly with the shipping cost. You click on confirm order and pay. You pay. At this moment, uh, Promake will receive the code and will answer you. And if everybody uh, agrees on the price, um, Promake will start manufacturing and uh, the payment will be done. We are going to keep the payment until you receive your part. And when you are, when you receive your part and you say, I'm okay with the part, everything is fine. You click on the part is delivered and we pay at this moment, uh, Promake. This is also a warranty for you because, uh, if you have an issue, we know that um, that's a system keeps the money to be sure uh, everything is fine between you and the manufacturer. Let's go back. Okay, perfect. Thanks for the demo. I want now to, to show you a little, a little video about our new feature will coming in the next days, where um, you can see that we put our 3D experience marketplace directly within SOLIDWORKS. So this is a project you have in SOLIDWORKS. You open the marketplace, you select some part you want to create within the marketplace, you add part on the marketplace, you choose uh, the process you want, let's say 3D, 3D printing, plastic ABS. It is the same consumer journey and you have directly within SOLIDWORKS the price. And now if you modify the part, you will see that the price will be modified in live. And you can continue, you can choose to uh, buy it directly within SOLIDWORKS. So you choose your model, blah, 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 and you pay directly within the software. So you have this uh, e-commerce part where you can order your part within uh, SOLIDWORKS, but it's, it is also a super um, tool to design a, a piece at a certain level of price. Because here you can modify your piece live and see the price is changing live. Yeah. So now, I just want to present to you another feature of our 3D experience make marketplace. So what I presented to you, it's really a public website where everybody can go. It's totally free. Uh, you choose your seller, you pay online, and uh, everybody can go public. Now we are developing another um, uh, platform, which is more a private ecosystem marketplace. That means as, um, uh, as a company, 
you can choose to have a private marketplace to connect your designers with industrial service providers and with your um, sourcing legal finance or program manager. That means it is a real plus for a strategy of make or buy. Because you can create, and you can see it on the second part of the slide, you can create internal capacities and external suppliers. That means you can say, I will add the 3D printer I have on my site, but also add 3D printer or CNC machining, maybe who are in another part of the world. And you can add to the private marketplaces your preferred vendors, so manufacturers you have a contract with, or you can choose to ask all the community of, uh, of our ecosystem. So this is really a good uh, tool to develop a strategy of or make or buy. I upload my part as a designer and I can see, is it better to do it on my site? It is cheaper or is it cheaper to go with preferred vendors or to go maybe with the new vendors? I don't know, but part of the um, 3D experience market. So this is exactly the idea. I go from my, my site today where I have my 3D printing and I can find other 3D printer of my company or other company across the world. So make enterprise, it's, uh, it's pretty simple to put in place in your company. It's uh, I invite my factories to join. I add my preferred vendor. I promote and deploy it to all my designers or engineer, engineers within my company. And after, I have a dashboard to see if I, can, if I do some new uh, some, um, uh, some, uh, saving, uh, how, how many people are using it live or how many people use it during uh, last month, etc. So a real dashboard with data about uh, your uh, manufacturing stuff. So three key values for make enterprise, a strategy of sourcing, a formal collaboration uh, with your manufacturing service providers, and an enterprise manufacturing capacity optimization. So to summarize a little breakdown of 3D experience made, it is an on-demand manufacturing, very simple, I upload my part, I choose my process, my material, I select one out of 250 manufacturers, one or several, I pay online, I receive my part. It is available within Katia, within SOLIDWORKS. And if you want to test, you can scan the QR code now with your smartphone and see the website there. Okay, well, that's great, uh, Benoit. Thank you very much. Yeah, guys, I mean, if you want, by all means, feel free to scan or screenshot it, but frankly, we'll have the website at the end of the webinar as well, so don't worry about that. So essentially, Benoit, what we're saying here is that people that uh, are users of uh, 3D printing or perhaps haven't used 3D printing but want to get started and try out with one part or maybe a batch of 10 parts, but no more than that, uh, they skip completely the step of uh, investing into machinery exactly. and uh, of course it's not just the machinery very often that needs to be acquired is also the knowledge is also training uh, the staff it's also having dedicated staff to operate the machines and so on so what we're saying is through the through the 3d experience platform people can just go in there and pretty much like you showed us up, upload any any file any yeah. sdl any cad file yeah and, uh, and get their parts made in whatever technology, whatever material they want. Exactly, it's exactly that. And at minimum, you can see the math about uh, how, how does it cost to print it with someone else. Yeah. Or you can say, I can do myself at this moment. Okay, so if I want now to just go create an account, it's completely free of charge. Completely free of charge. Okay, uh, let me just clarify. As I see, we have some of our, um, uh, attendees asking some questions, which of course I want to keep for the end of the presentation, but there are a couple that are very interesting, I think, uh, before we move on to speaking with uh, ProMake, uh, it would be interesting to cover them with you, Benoit. Uh, I see here people asking, 
do you accept the CAD files from uh, from multiple uh, software providers? So if it's a if it's a file from FreeCAD or Blender, is that something that is uh, compatible with your platform? We accept all the CAD files with universal format like STL, STEP, um, X, etc. And of course, uh, CAD files from uh, CATIA, eDrawings, or uh, SolidWorks. Okay, fair but enough. Not the native um, format of I don't know AutoCAD. Okay. Whatever. Okay, cool. Um, okay, at this stage, uh, guys, uh, thank you very much. But I'm pretty sure we'll get back to you at some point uh, later in the webinar. But uh, Jason, Gavin, I'll pass on the torch to you guys. Uh, we would like to know who you are. Thank you, Phil. Good pass. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, we are obviously, as you heard earlier, we're Primark International. We have offices both um, in Cape, in South Africa, in Johannesburg, and in the UK. Um, we've been in the 3D printing field. Personally, myself, I've been in the printing field since 1996, so that's been over 23 years. Gavin's also been, yeah, you've been about, about 15, 20 years also, thereabout. About 15, yeah. 15, yeah. So, um, you know, we've got a wide variety and a wide diversification of understanding of the 3D printing field. We take our, our industry very seriously to the point that last year, January, uh, we did the world's first 3D printed in air transplant utilizing uh, high tech micro 3D printing where we could harmonically tune the little ossicles inside the in the ear so we could restore um, hearing right across the globe. We've been put into the same category as the first heart transplant in South Africa and uh, we're pursuing uh, even more events. This is taking us to the point to push 3D printing innovations to a whole new level by getting involved with the UK Space Agency, where we're actually currently um, trialing a whole system to do a lot of our medical 3D printed research actually on the International Space Station, which I actually just got back this morning from to um, finalize and complete. So there's going to be some really innovative research coming about that will be actually available to other entrepreneurs. So this is going to be really, really exciting. Um, Gavin won uh, uh, the, the pitch with Desto Systems, um, which was originally held in, in Johannesburg. So, Gavin, you want to talk about that? Um, yes. Uh, so, we were um, uh, very fortunate to uh, be able to pitch or do the, the initial pitch um, at uh, Chimelohong in, um, in Joburg itself. Um, it was quite a, a a prestigious thing. I think there were only about four or five of us that were selected um, and we essentially um, were chosen to go and pitch to um, the CEO uh, of DASO in Paris, uh, which happened in October last year. Um, <clears throat> our um, projects essentially were accepted um, and uh, uh, we, we now become part of the, uh, very much a part of the DASO um, experience in terms of the online platform, but also in terms of um, uh, assistance and, um, uh, or I should say assistance from DASO's side with uh, any future projects that are coming up. Uh, we had a meeting with them uh, last, uh, with the beginning of the week. Um, we've got a couple of plastics uh, um, <clears throat> projects that we're busy with um, that are very exciting, very pioneering. Um, and uh, so, yeah, the, the pitch itself was was very it, it was very uh, good to be a part of it, um, and awesome to be able to go through to to Paris um, and pitch the essentially the inner ear uh, transplant that we had done in March last year. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, we wanted to take obviously the three D experience platform to a whole new level, and as uh, Benoit said earlier, accessibility platform and experience is becoming a key element because we've always heard about rapid prototyping. Jason, Jason, I'm sure to interrupt you. If you could just go a bit slower so we can uh, we can keep up with what you're saying. Sorry, South Africans, we speak very fast. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not to um, worry, not to worry at all. Thank you. As I was saying, we want to take the 3D experience platform to the point of making it a lot more accessible and ease of use because especially coming from like um, Africa and South Africa, you know, people are still trying to adjust, adjust to the speed of the technology evolving, but also having access to it is, is sometimes a bit challenging due to people not always having high-tech PCs or Mac computers or anything of that sort. So 
with our new mobile device platform we developed, you can use a, a tablet, um, also sometimes your mobile phone, but preferably a mobile a device such as a tablet, where you can access all the 3D printing machines plus other networking opportunities. Uh, you can buy parts for your printers if you have them and start building your own business and we'll be able to become a part of a tech support to your business based through this mobile device platform. You will see that you can access the, the 3D experience. You, know, you can get instant quoting through the side. You can see what machines are available so that you are not left wondering or pondering what's going to happen or should you get back to a PC because you might be on the move. You might be traveling. You might be in a rural part but still want to be able to produce parts. This helps you a lot in respects that you don't have to always have your machine near you. All you need is have access through an internet connection and your mobile device. So this will help build your business alongside developments from us and Dasso Systems. So what has the 3D Experience platform done for us? Um, it has really, really leveraged a lot for us in many aspects uh, due to the fact that we've got the, the uh, collaborations with Dasso in, in Paris after the, the pitch that um, Gavin managed to win. The, we decided, well, you know, we need to take it even further due to the fact that we're working a lot with the, the UK Space Agency, European Space Agency, um, a lot of the scientific industrial research in South Africa and South African government. But as mentioned, a lot, somebody's mentioned earlier, you know, where and how is everything kept safe and um, controlled with GDPR and the rest of it. So we have introducing a whole system which is utilizing AI tech, uh, and block, uh, blockchain coding so that we are able to secure that parts are not stolen or used or for anybody else or we take our confidentiality of our clients products very very seriously I mean there's nothing worse than anybody finding out that their designs have been passed on without it, their, uh, their acceptance or confirmation of, of doing so so you know we're going to be using um, as I say AI tech to make sure that we stay cutting head uh, cutting edge but we're utilizing the AI tech, and uh, we decided, well, you need, it's all good and well having AI data, but we need to be able to take that data and put it into machines. So we're going to introduce machine learning to go with it. So as we're printing and as we're designing, there's this whole algorithm that is making sure that parts are produced even better and better as time goes on. So it's not just left in a situation of send us the parts and we hopefully will send you a good part. It's a way of tracking traceability to ensure compliance and uh, high-end tech to your business. So what this has also then led, with us being based up here in Manchester, we are now sitting in the heart. Sorry, sorry. So okay. we're, we're based in the heart of where uh, graphene was found. Uh, we've managed to be, been working a lot with the graphene institutes and the universities aside, and we've managed to work out a way to put graphene through our 3D printing machines. So for those of you that don't know what graphene is, here's a short little video for you to, to check. So I'll put this live right now. The first ever, ever man-made material, material in two, two dimensions. Graphene has almost limitless, limitless potential, potential, so light is the thing. Strong with dynamic, dynamic visions, visions predictions, predictions of sci-fi writers, writers, writers and tech gurus, gurus finally, finally within, within our grasp. grasp. It, is it is a carbon sheet, one, one out of thick, but two, but two hundred, hundred times stronger, stronger than steel. steel. It's the, the lightest, most conductive, conductive man-made man -made material on Earth. Earth. It, can it can be used for DNA, DNA sequencing at a nanoscopic level. It, it can be programmed to attach itself to specific cells, like cancer cells, which will revolutionize medicine. In a few years, we could all be wearing graphene-laced sparkling. We could be writing, tattooing, painting, electrically conductive reactive inks. The list is endless. In the future, graphene's magnetic properties could bring particle accelerators in into our laboratories instead of out on mountain ranges. It could be like having CERN on a desktop. And it is all because of graphene. I mean, wow. See, for this city, it's not so much a question of where do we start. It's all about where do we go next? OK, well, graphene actually seems interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
it's definitely a special we sure. able to listen to it. Uh, Jason, I'll get right back onto your slides for, for you to continue where we left from. And there we go. So, um, so this the graphene itself is definitely the new space age material because of it being so strong and, and on molecular level and so light. The, the, the possibilities of what can be done in medical, aerospace, uh, automotive, construction, industrial, it's it's revolutionary. And what we've been able to achieve so far, especially with regards to what we're going to be doing in space is really going to make a major game changer in the way we see plastics manufacturing from the strength point of view. What we're also doing, and Gav can con maybe have a chat about this, he, I mean, he's more familiar with this, is that um, we're doing the micro titanium printing. Absolutely. So, so this um, uh, form of uh, 3D printing essentially is uh, metal. These pieces that you're looking at at the moment are all titanium based. Um, this technology allows us to do very, very small, very fine, very high detail and very accurate parts um, in titanium, stainless and aluminium at this stage. Um, as you can see, the size of the parts are absolutely tiny. Compare them to the size of a, the head of a pen, um, you'll notice that they are exceptionally small parts. Um, this, a lot of this is uh, was going to apply to the, um, the medical side of our, our business model. Um, we use this material, use this process ex extensively already, um, and we'll continue to use it going forward. Um, you're welcome to to be to get in touch with us for more information on this process. Um, typically, how it works, and uh, yeah, you will be able to access it through the 3D Experience platform as well. So this is again something that uh, someone with no particular knowledge on 3D printing, no experience, uh, no background, just by accessing the platform, they can get parts Correct. like that made uh, through you guys. Correct, yeah. Correct, Philippos. You know, I think from our point of view and, and where, where we have well, one of our, our strong points um, typically lies in the material science side, side of things where not only do are we able to supply uh, cutting edge um, materials, we also develop our own materials. Um, and from a, a 3D printing point of view, um, I think if everybody starts looking at 3D printing from this point of view, um, typically the technology lies in the materials. Um, uh, as long as you have the correct material, you can then associate that with your application. Uh, you'll find that your application normally de uh, determines the material that you'll that you'll use. So, um, guys and girls, you're welcome to lean on us. Uh, Jay and I have a lot of experience. Um, as I say, we develop our own materials as well. So when it comes to material science, it's something we can definitely assist with, um, not just for titanium, but uh, graphene, as we were talking about, um, plastics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we can assist you with all of that. Great, sir. Yeah. Um, on to, on to, on, sorry, sorry, I went a bit too far there. Um, one of the other things that a lot of people have been asking, especially in the industrial sector, is um, mass manufacturing. It's all going well 3D printing metal parts, but what about mass manufacturing? So what we also set up now with some large foundries is that we are able to print and go direct to metal cost and to direct into sand casting. We are also able to print direct sand casting molds also. So if you want to do metal fabrication, um, that's the way to go. We are working a wide range of material. As you can see here, we do like the ferrous, non-ferrous. I'm not going to read the whole list, but you can see the end for what is right across the board. So the possibilities lie within your hands now as us being your tech support and material science suppliers, essentially. We will guide you and help you achieve the goals you want to do. Um, so if you want to keep, get in touch with us, just even to bounce some ideas, not necessarily to always get a quote, we're hope, happy to listen to you. And if you want to try and pioneer anything new, give us a shout. We're glad to gladly assist, yeah? Absolutely. Uh, service that we do, um, obviously 3D scanning. Um, Gav is very, very, very experienced in 3D scanning especially. Um, we have a um, CAD house in-house CAD designers that we work with. We do uh, polyurethane and other polymer vacuum castings so that we can do short run injection molding as well as large run injection molding 
tooling and manufacturing. We can help with the molds. We've got experienced designers that help us with that, as well as composite casting and fabrication, such as your carbon fiber, Kevlar's, uh, other polymers that will help make your product a lot more cost effective than just going through the standard route and obviously die, die casting and tooling. So, um, Gabe, is anything else that you want to add to that? Um, I think just further to that, um, we, we have quite a large um, range of, of services to offer. Um, we, we are a full manufacturing company at the end of the day, um, utilizing uh, latest technologies, 3D printing, 3D scanning, um, along with all the other services that we have provided, um, CNC machining, uh, mold design, mold production, um, and then again back to the large run injection molding scenario. Uh, we work with a fantastic company called MNF Design. Um, very, uh, very capable people, and we do a lot of work with them. Um, so, yeah, I think from that point of view, um, Jay, absolutely, I think we've we've got it done. Um, I think we can we can move on to the next slide, guys. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Well, okay. thank you very much, Jason and Gavin. Thanks a lot for the information and uh, oh, exciting exciting projects you guys are involved in. Definitely, uh, absolutely. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Uh, for our attendees, this is uh, now the part where we'll 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 go over your questions. Uh, of course, at any point, keep in mind uh, you can uh, you can get in touch with uh, Benoit, Gavin, Jason, or myself uh, through the email addresses you you can find in front of you. Um, I think let's let's jump right into the questions. And by all means, guys, please feel free. Any questions you have, this is the the right time now to ask them. Um, so I'll, I'll just start, uh, I'll just start straight away with one we got in the beginning of the webinar and it's for you Benoit, because it seems like a lot of people, um, tend to, uh, tend to have a certain curiosity on whether, uh, any files they upload into a platform are shared or not. You guys at ProMake also mentioned how you're working with, uh, blockchain technologies to prevent, uh, any leaks of, uh, of such uh, personal data being shared. Um, are you guys, uh, can you guarantee that the, that a design uploaded onto your platform is safe? Are, are you, um, are, are you meeting all the criteria of GDPR in 2020? How is that? So the part when you upload it on our platform is, um, is, um, keep on, uh, is kept in our uh, drive. So uh, what we call uh, in, um, in DASO systems the 3D drive. And the 3D drive uh, fits all the GDPR and uh, a lot of security because it's, it's uh, simply the drive of DASO systems. So we, we need also for our own company to be sure about uh, the securization of, uh, of this platform. OK. So essentially, you do guarantee that uh, the, de the designs are safe. Yeah. Um, and further to that, guys, we, we also have yeah. stringent um, processes on our side where um, your data is 100% safe. Um, Jay and I have been in business for a good 15, 15 years in terms of 3D printing manufacturing, and we, we've never had a problem. We, we ensure that your designs are safe, they um, stay with the relevant people, and they're not passed on. Um, we do put uh, necessary paperwork in place as well, NDAs. Uh, confidentiality agreements if necessary um so we 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 make sure that everybody's covered at the end of the day uh, the nda not just doesn't just cover you as the client but it covers us as the supplier as well and then dasso um as the as the platform um have their own processes but we then also have ours just as a backup okay, no thank you thank you very much gavin uh we have uh 10 minutes uh 10 minutes left for, for our webinar, so I'll try to go over as many questions as I can, guys, if that's all right with you. Um, Perfect. So, so one we got is, Benoit, for someone that hasn't used 3D printing before, uh, a company that perhaps is producing and they are producing through more traditional uh, manufacturing methods, such as uh, CNC machining or injection molding or so, and they want to try to get into 3D printing to try out uh, whether they would benefit from it or so. Is there a certain technology that you would advise they they start with? Yes, depending on the project. Uh, to be honest, um, if you want to uh, to try 
new uh, new process as 3D printing, uh, just upload the part and uh, test. You can ask for different uh, sellers if you want and collaborate with them. Uh, maybe when you are going to upload your part, we see immediately thank you to our geometry check that the part is not doable with uh, 3D printing, for example. Uh, but when you are going to, uh, to ask for different uh, manufacturers, these manufacturers uh, could help you and say, okay, uh, this part, I can do it in 3D printing. This part, I cannot because of different reasons. It's really, our platform is really a collaborative platform between you and uh, manufacturers. Okay, fair enough. So for a company that wants to get started then, what sort of advice would you give them, considering they have no background in 3D printing? So, uh, create your STL file, connect to our platform, check uh, the geometry and manufacturability uh, uh, manufacturability uh, features. Which is done on the platform online. When you upload your part and you are on the specification page, you will see on, uh, on the right uh, top corner, uh, geometry and manufacturability. This is the first step to, to see if it's possible to print it. Okay. okay? When, you do, when you did that, uh, you can go directly to the seller and see how many sellers can uh, can help you on this part and see the price also because the price will be a quite rare. Okay, and that is uh, done either instantly or you can have uh, yeah. you can be choosing your your own supplier. Okay, I'll speak a bit on materials. Um, there was a gentleman asking earlier uh, about material and material choice. Uh, if you are used to manufacturing certain parts in, in material. Do we know we can find the same materials done through 3D printing? Uh, so if I'm producing certain things yeah. through, let's say, injection molding, yeah. and uh, I use certain plastics, yeah. will I be able to find the same plastics for 3D printing? Yeah, it's super simple on the platform because uh, if you go and you select 3D printing and select your material, you will see immediately if we have seller, you can do it or not. So you go to the platform, you upload your file, you select 3D printing, you select the exact material you want, and immediately you will see if, if someone on the platform and then someone in the world can do it with, uh, with uh, this material. Okay. There are materials available, um, Filippo. Sorry if I might just jump in there. There are, <coughs> there are materials. Okay. Um, there are materials available on the platform that are um, uh, of the same um, makeup as injection molding materials. Um, typically, you'll find that uh, there are not a lot of them. Um, uh, the 3D printing materials and injection molding materials um, are, can be very different. However, as I say, there are a few that are available. Um, I think the best thing to do, and if uh, just to go back a little bit as well, um, the best thing to do in that case from a, a, a newbie point of view, um, we, we are here to consult. Um, we are here to give you advice as well. Um, uh, starting off uh, from the beginning, I think, you know, if you do have any questions, you're unsure of anything, um, run it past us, run it past um, uh, Benoit, um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, one of us will be able to give you a solution. If not the same material in terms of injection molding, we have uh, similar materials that will um, essentially provide the same uh, functionality. Um, and again, it's all about just having a look at the application and then speaking the correct material to that application. Uh, you'll find a lot of the time um, we, we get requests where people are asking for exactly that, um, the exact same material that comes out of an injection molding mm -hmm. machine. Um, and again, yeah, depending on that, normal, isn't it? People just being used to a certain material and just wanting to try a different technology for it. Correct, correct. And you know, a lot of the time, um, we can we can actually overcome that. You know, if the if the application is one of prototyping, you don't necessarily need to um, use the exact same material. However, if you are going into a production environment, um, yes, then we need to relook at it and re. Uh, or um, then uh, uh, re-advise as to what the best route is for uh, for the application. So I think just keep that in mind, guys. And again, in every respect, um, on the platform there is a section where you can you can ask questions, you can put comments in, 
Um, both Jay and I get those emails directly on our phones um, and we can answer you guys straight off the bat. That's great to know that there is such support. We, we, take support. I mean, we essentially take support for members of the industry um, and we don't want to be one of those where we're not approachable. We're completely approachable. I mean, we, we had to start somewhere and it's a great platform to start somewhere, you know? That, exactly. that, is, that is great and of course that's a message to to everyone attending the webinar as well by all means uh, i'm pretty sure uh, everyone in here will be more than happy to answer any questions you have following this webinar now for the last five minutes Sorry. i'll just try to 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 fit as many questions from the audience as possible earlier on we were asked about large large scale uh, manufacturing so what if you want to produce a large scale part is that is that an option through through the platform through the three experience make? Yeah, so we have some um, so very 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 large scale. So well, it's not, <laughs> if you want to build a house, uh, we can provide it directly uh, through our website. Uh, but we uh, we have some um, some manufacturers who has uh, who have this capacity to create large scale. So if you don't find it directly on our website when you upload your part you have zero people who can do it just drop an email to marketplace.make at sweetgs.com and we are going to help you to find someone who can do it okay but if you're looking for a, a, a large scale manufacturing not necessarily on a size volume point of view but more hundreds of parts at a time in units um, we are able to assist again depending on the, size, the physical size of the part but mass manufacturing is also go to place it's not just a prototyping platform you can actually yeah. go to full production and so become commercially viable as for the end use product. <laughs> yeah. yeah which will also yeah, should we should we get a request in that respect sure thing yeah no, large scale i mean uh, as we saw from the beginning of the presentation as well it's uh, it's been taking off in 3d printing in general um, as has the, the workspace, it has been changing. And I see the last uh, couple of questions we have here are all both uh, job related. Uh, so Benoit, we're asked here by uh, John and Ruchi, what types of new jobs do you think will be created as 3D printing is growing? As we saw in the beginning, uh, it is expected to, to quadruple over the next few years. Uh, and uh, what do you see in terms of uh, medical personnel? For uh, three in the three printing field, to be honest, I think uh, especially on the medical personnel, uh, I think uh, ProMake <coughs> have a good idea about that because uh, there are. We actually, sorry, <laughs> so we did a conference the other day um, down in London, and we were labeled as the, the new possible air traffic control system for the med tech sector, where we are able to link hospitals and practitioners and engineers through our platform because we're working a lot with ISO 13485 certifications in the medical sector. It opens a lot of doors for customization in many aspects and hence with us doing the whole lot of work for to go into space, the certifications around that is astronomical, way more than you'll ever find in the medical field. What it is going to do is it's going to give the practitioner the access to engineering tools without having to learn the engineering aspect of how to manufacture something because you'll have a tech support. So there's a lot of new developments that are going to come about. And there were, I, we read some stats the other day that even kids that are leaving high school that are going to go into studying medicine, I think with the stats was to come something close to about 60% of kids are going to enter into jobs that haven't been created yet due to this technology. And we foresee it. We see it coming already. I mean, we can see it changing daily. So new jobs are going to develop in ways that the product that hasn't been actually thought of yet. So it's going to happen. Yeah, well, I think it's difficult to, to pinpoint exactly what industries are going to be coming up um, and, and what jobs are going to be available. Um, <clears throat> I think the reason for that is because um, the, the, the industries haven't been uh, created yet. Um, mm -hmm. It's yet to come. So uh, I think the, the, the positive side to that is that whatever ind industries do come out of it um, are going to be extremely, extremely uh, good industries and, and good to be a part of. It's all, all cutting edge technology and, and uh, typically you're going to want to be a part of that. Your imagination is your limitation essentially. Exactly that. No more Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I guess guys, uh, as we're approaching 5 p.m., um, yeah. Just, uh, I, I would advise the the gentleman in our in our chat require uh, inquiring about uh, training workshops and uh, internships in particular. 
uh, to email directly Benoit, Gavin, Jason. I'm sure they'll be more than happy uh, to assist you with those. Um, and the uh, last thing I would just like to, to, to ask you, Benoit, is what about uh, NDAs, uh, non-disclosure agreements? Yeah, I saw some question around that. Uh, be sure that uh, when you when you do a request on our platform, you can upload uh, NDA, so non-disclosure agreement, uh, between you and the manufacturers. And the manufacturer cannot open uh, your request before signing this NDA. It is your protection for your AP uh, and um, and securize really uh, your AP when the manufacturer will cut and uh, and start looking at your part. Okay, that's great to know. Well, guys, five o'clock Central European time. Uh, I hope you you all enjoyed our webinar. Thank you very very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we'll be letting you know about the next one. But uh, as of now, Jason, Gavin, Benoit, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Until the next one. Guys, if you have any questions, please, uh, please um, email, email uh, our speakers directly. And keep in mind, we'll be sharing uh, the recorded version of the webinar for as many replays as you want for you to, to enjoy again. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you for everybody thank for listening. Everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Take Ciao. care. Bye.